Okay, I'm now speaking with Tony Burroughs. Tony, you've been to Fort Wayne a few times now. What do you like about coming back to Fort Wayne? Well, Fort Wayne is always very, very exciting. You know, it, it has such a renowned library and genealogy department. Uh, it's one of the best places to research. But the uh, staff there is so super, super friendly. It's always a pleasure to work with them. And they bend over backwards all the time to help you out so that your trip is always enjoyable, you know. And then I see some old friends here when I come too, you know. But when you say that this is one of the best places to research, I, I hear that often. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that they have the largest collection of genealogy journals and newsletters in the country, of anywhere. So there's a lot of people that have written articles on how to research your family history. They've transcribed records and put them in their local publications. And all of those, there's like five, six, seven thousands of those publications right here in the Fort Wayne Public Library. So if you want to see something that was done before you that could possibly contain information about your answers, it will be in one of those periodicals. They also have a very large collection of original records that have been microfilmed here. They also have a very large collection of published family histories. They also have a lot of how-to reference guides. So it's, it's the diversity and the depth of the collection that they have here, as well as they have some unique things here that, you know, some of the only places where you can find those kinds of things. So you can always find something and uh, so much here that you can spend quite a while and never finish. Now, are you a part of the Chicago uh, group? Part of the Chicago group? Uh, yes and no. I'm the former president of the Chicago Afro-American Geological and Historical Society. And so we have a large contingent. We have about 50 people that came down on a bus. I didn't come down on the bus with them, but I am part of that group. I'm still a member. I've been a member for like quite a while. But I'm also a member of a couple other organizations in Chicago, too. But now that was a loaded question. I've okay. been meeting these people for the past, I don't mm -hmm. know how many years they've been coming here. Right. But I got a chance to talk with a whole lot of women from the group. Right. And my gosh, they look like regular people on the outside. But when you ask my question, they talk like nuclear physicists. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what do you all do in that group that gets their minds so, I mean, I've never heard people, person after person after person, well, in fact, everybody did that here that, that I spoke with, with such precision. Well, it's like when, when you're in school and you learn about history, you learn about major events and major figures like presidents and generals and kings and queens and large uh, 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 movements. In genealogy, you study similar events, but you study them in micro levels because you're looking for names of specific individuals that live in specific time periods in specific places. So genealogy is extremely detailed, much more detailed than most historians deal with. So in dealing with, because in order to find some records, you, you have to have the name of your ancestors you have to know where they lived, and you have to know when they lived in order to identify what records existed during that time, place, and that location. So genealogy is very specific. You can't deal with generalities, you know. So I think that's why uh, people talk so much in, in specifics and detail with genealogy. You know, I hear some people say that, oh, I can't find anything on my family. Is it true that you can that any family can find, any person can find? information about their families if they just looked? Oh yeah, absolutely. Most of the time people say they can't find them because they don't know how to look. They don't know where to look. They don't know the resources that exist and they don't know the techniques of researching. Anybody can start genealogy, start their family history research. Genealogy starts with ourselves and you go backward one step at a time. So you start by writing your own autobiography, thinking about when you grow up, where you live, who was your family, who is your extended family? Did you go off and visit people? And then you go off and you interview your relatives, and everybody can do that. When you talk to your relatives, you find out their lives, and then who their parents were, and who their aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents are. And after you interview all the different relatives, you start collecting a mass of data. With that, you look around your house, 
and you look through the basement, the attic, the trunk, the shoebox, the dresser drawer, and you're looking for things like the family Bible, military discharge certificates, obituaries in the newspaper, funeral programs, all those kinds of things in our house that mention relatives' names on them, and that helps send you back a little further. Then you go out to the family cemetery and see all the ancestors that are buried in the cemetery. So as long as you know what to do and how to do it, anybody can trace their family history. Okay, last thing, you know, <clears throat> when a person is suffering from uh, low self-esteem or racial persecution, does a study of genealogy and knowing yourself make all that stuff null and void? I don't know if it makes it null and void, but I think what happens is that once people find their ancestors and records and they see that they contributed to every facet of life and history in America, I think they look at the world very differently and they become proud of who their ancestors are, what they did, and what the sacrifices they made in order for us to be here today. So I think that genealogy is very important and it helps people with self-esteem because too often people live for today and they don't understand history and they don't understand the role that their ancestors played in history. And you hear about Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves and you don't really understand that the enslaved people freed themselves. They're the ones that picked up arms and fought in the Civil War. They're the ones that walked off of the plantations. All Abraham Lincoln did was sign a document and he didn't free any slaves. People walked off plantations and picked up arms and freed themselves. I think once people realize this, they'll be much more proud of their ancestors than what they are. A lot of people left and went through the Underground Railroad. Abraham Lincoln didn't have anything to do with that. So I think once people realize this, they'll uh, really develop a lot of self-esteem and a lot of pride in their ancestors. Okay, last thing. This uh, new, uh, this was the first international summit. What do you think about that concept? I think it's a great concept. Uh, what it was, it's a merging of many, many different organizations. Organizations on the East Coast and organizations on the West Coast coming together to do a joint program and trying to extend it internationally. Now, we didn't have a lot of international participation, but there's a lot of people doing genealogy internationally. I've been speaking in Canada for about 10 or 15 years, and I know a lot of people doing genealogy in Ontario and all, as well as in Nova Scotia. Um, I've met people that are doing genealogy in Jamaica and in Puerto Rico and in different islands. And I met a, a brother who's been doing genealogy in Ecuador, South America, uh, as well as I went to London and hooked up with some genealogists in London. So I think this is a first step, but I think it, if it continues on, I think it could be broader and be truly international. So I think the vision of it is what's important and the fact that people came together and they want to go further. So I think this can only get bigger and better. Well, we in Fort Wayne certainly want to help that become a reality. So thank you very much. Thank you, and we appreciate the hospitality. You've done a great job. Thank, thank you. you.